interesting of a topic. So I'm super excited to be here today and to, uh, to share my story and hopefully learn from all of you. This has been an amazing conference. Um, I always love getting out of the district. Um, <laughs> it's always nice to talk to other people who are, you know, doing great work. So again, I'm really excited to be here. Before I get started, can I just kind of know who's in the room? How many of you are at a, at a, in a, in a district, at a local district? You can raise your hand. So we got some people at a local district. Um, how many are classroom teachers? So we got some classroom teachers. How many are university people? Got some university people. Uh, consultants like working for the State Department. Okay. Am I missing anybody? Anyone I didn't? Dark make? Side. The dark side? What's the dark side? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad everyone is here. I'm going to say that. I'm always happy. So let me tell you a little bit about um, today, what we're going to be talking about. I um, always like to give everything I do and we do away in Fraser. So if you have a device, please go to this little Weebly I threw together last night. I was shocked this wasn't taken, but UDL IRN 2016 is open to take. So I stole it last night and I made a little Weebly. It has today's PowerPoint on it and it has all of the other resources I'm going to be talking about. So if you'd like to go check that out right now, you can download the PowerPoint, you can follow along with that. Um, and all of the resources I'm going to be sharing today um, are on that, um, on that Weebly, and I'll leave that up for a couple of months. The other piece I wanted you to be aware of, I'm going to be talking today about how we've really tried to leverage our learning management system to um, implement universal design for learning. So I also made everyone a temp user in our um, learning management system that we're currently using, and there's that information on the website as well. So. If you want to leave now, it's all good. If you want to leave in 15 minutes, I'm really hard to offend. I tell people that all the time. I did professional development for five years before I took the position as assistant superintendent. And I always said, you have to take care of your own learning needs. So um, please feel free to ask questions, make, you know, make some comments as we go through the, the presentation today. It's a small group. I want to make sure you um, obviously get everything that you want out of the experience. So really what I want to share today is one district's journey with customizing the learning for our students. And universal design for learning really was the foundation to our transformation. And it has been um, a journey. You're going to hear about work that we've been doing for the past five years. This isn't something, you know, we started yesterday. It's a journey. And I always say it's about the journey, not the destination. And I, I think that's really important to remember. So we're going to talk a lot about the systems and um, the strategic approach we took in Fraser to um, implement universal design for learning, implement technology, implement um, a new curriculum. I mean, a lot of things are colliding at one time. You have the Common Core, you have new technology coming into your district. You know, how do you really redesign your learning environment? And um, I really believe having systems in place is crucial. And one of the things you're going to hear um, us talk about and what we did in Fraser is having a district-wide learning management system and really bringing together all of those resources in a systemic way so people feel that they um, are a part of the decision-making process and a part of putting together this content, but it's not done in isolation. You have to have that flexibility for um, all of your stakeholders to have access and have access that is meaningful. Um, one of the things we learned very early on is that when you go one-to-one, -one, your uh, parents can be really confused about how to access content and they need to be um, trained as well. So we often talk about how in Fraser we're actually educating two generations, both the parent and the student. So that's really important um, to remember. So a little bit about where um, I'm from. I am from Michigan. Go blue or go green, whatever is your, your choice. Um, we are a suburb right outside of um, South, a suburb of southeastern Michigan. We're about 20 minutes outside of Detroit, if that helps. And we have nine buildings. Um, we always say we're the perfect size. We have nine buildings. We're about 5,300 kids. So we can move pretty quickly and we can implement change a little bit um, faster than districts that are, you know, um, have four high schools or something along those lines. And um, you're going to see our enrollment. We're at about 5,300 students. And what's really, I think, exciting about our district is we're 34% school of choice. So 34% of our families choose to come to our district. And throughout our county, we've seen a lot of um, declining enrollment. And we have maintained or increased really the past five years. So that's something you know we're very proud of. We're in our fourth year of a one-to-one -one iPad learning environment. Um, in addition, we have um, robust Wi-Fi in all of our buildings. We have Apple TV in all of our classrooms. And um, 
All of our teachers have MacBooks. I mean, we are definitely technology rich. And that was um, a big shift because if you went back to our district 10 years, I mean, 10 years ago, they didn't have email. So they have had a real influx of technology, our teachers. So not only have we um, put in a lot of technology, we've also done it at a very fast pace for them. So just a, a little bit of background. Um, what we were able to do is we passed a bond in 2011, and that really uh, kind of propelled us into our digital transformation. And it was a big commitment by our um, community. We're probably about 45 to 50 percent free and reduced lunch. It's very blue collar and having our parents commit to that kind of a change was a really big deal in Fraser. Um, I think the biggest piece, I, I can't stress this enough in this, with this kind of transformation, is you have to go slow to go fast. And one of the things we decided is that before we were going to do anything with that money and spend any of those dollars, we put together a curriculum committee to determine the instructional needs of the district. And we focused our conversation around universal design for learning. It was a great framework to bring um, stakeholders together to really talk about how do you redesign that learning environment. So that committee came together almost five years ago and we were charged with um, really four main points. And I, I think this is so important when you talk about any kind of change of that magnitude when you're asking a district to go one-to-one -one, or you're gonna buy Chromebooks or whatever you're gonna do too often districts just go in and they buy the stuff and they they don't have planning in advance we took a whole year to plan before we purchased any devices and then we also waited um, that summer we gave all of our teachers the technology and gave them a good three to four months a little bit of PD so they had an opportunity to test things out before um, we implemented with the students. So these four points were critical. We talked a lot about what do we want the environment to look like, what were the components of the learning environment at each level, and then we developed a timeline for implementation that included our professional development. And then the last piece was then determining the resources that we needed. And so often when I hear about schools that weren't successful, I think it's because they didn't plan well. And again, I know there's pressure often, you get a bond, and you know the next day the kids are like, well, where's my iPad? And we're like, you're not getting it. That's not getting it. So some of our seniors are a little disappointed, but that planning is so important. And I, I think it's helped us to get to the point where we are today. So we knew we had to follow a path. And we knew we had to not only um, redesign our curriculum, but we also had to redesign our instructional practices. And UDL provided that foundation and path for our teachers and administration to build that, um, I want to say, systems approach to implementation. And I think that's what's exciting about um, having the opportunity to be in a position like mine, because you know, when I was, uh, you know, I did professional development, I'd go in and I'd do the PD, and I'd hope five or six people may go back and implement. Well, when you finally, you know, you're in charge, I'm like, great, I'm in charge. I'm like, this is gonna be so much fun. Not so much, because you end up like 50% of the time, they hate you, you know, they're like, what's this woman doing? But <laughs> you do have to remember, the kids are the most important thing, and what you're doing is good for kids. So um, we really focused in on this systematic approach to um, implementation. And you're gonna see in the PowerPoint that I posted, our, we call it our yellow brick road of what we've done um, up until this point. And I'm gonna go through and put all of my little marks on the road up here. And today I'm only gonna be focusing in on the foundational part of universal design. However, if you go to the website or to the PowerPoint, you're gonna see there's a lot more information. I believe you really have to have, you know, layers, yes. Could you get that website? Oh, there. yes. It's UDL, IRN, 2016 weebly.com. Is it dot weebly or just dot slash? Dot weebly, I apologize. Yes, it's dot. Yeah, there you go. There, now you'll get there. Perfect. So, this is um, really the, the path that we took to get to where we are today. And I talked to you about the importance of vision. I think if you're going to move towards uh, a district approach, you have to have vision. You have to start with the why. And we spent a lot of time in our district talking about the why and making sure all of our stakeholders understood our vision on why we felt it was so important to change the learning environment. It was never about special ed or general ed. All kids 
need to have access. All kids need to have a personalized experience. So we didn't care. We, we don't talk about UDL as being a special ed, a gen ed. It's about good design and good instruction. And, and that is so important. You have to make sure all of your stakeholders believe that and have that same vision from your superintendent to your special ed director to your principals. They all have to believe that. And I, that's why leadership is so important. And how do you build that leadership and that capacity? One of the big things we talked about is having teacher leadership. And you're going to see on our little bit of a path there, when we were building out our, our protocol of how we were going to um, you know, implement and go one-to-one -one and change the learning environment, we built in um, this position called 21st Century uh, teacher, Literacy Teachers. They are crucial to our success, success. We have one at every single building. They provide coaching. They provide professional development to all of our teachers, and they work side by side with our building administrators. So when we started to talk about universal design for learning and we started to implement this professional development, I had a cadre of coaches that worked alongside my principals and worked alongside the teachers that were in the building and um, knew their teachers and really could push the process along. So as we were starting to lay this foundation on universal design for learning, I was able to pull in our ISD, and you're gonna see some great resources from um, our local ISD. Just so you know, in Michigan, we, they're like RISAs, they're, you know, they work with all 21 districts in our county. And they provided some great professional development. But again, what often happens, you go to your RISA or your ISD, you send five teachers, they come back, or you send 10 teachers, they come back. There isn't always that systemic approach to that professional development. Well, we decided that all nine buildings were gonna get the professional development. All nine buildings were gonna have that coaching and they were all gonna to move together as a team with this work. And I, I can't stress to you enough the importance of having on-site coaching is to make that happen. Um, so again, I'm gonna really, like I said, focus in on the, the universal design for learning piece. I think it's important to remember there are other layers to this type of um, transformation. We went with iPads, so you might be familiar with the SAMR model that provided us a lot of resources. Um, we also did a book study and we've been working with um, a company called Modern Teacher. Our learning management system piece is huge. Um, we've done a ton of curriculum alignment. So all of those pieces come together to really um, have that type of digital transformation and learning transformation in your building. So when I talk about how we laid the foundation with universal design for learning, we again, we partnered with our ISD. And um, this website was invaluable to me. It's um, e3t.org, it's um, on, the, uh, um, on the, the Weebly. And we were able to partner with our, our um, ISD to have teacher leaders trained in a lot of our professional development, but the content was designed around the practices of universal design for learning. So when we were taking our teachers through the professional development, they actually were experiencing that professional development using the lens of universal design for learning. So you're gonna see here, we tried to tie it, our experience to three critical points of UDL. I wanted to make sure that our PD gave them the common language, that they understood the principles of UDL. And that's at a district level, that every teacher you go into their classroom, just asking them about different ways to engage a child or different ways for assessment, having that common language is crucial. So that was one key piece that came out of our um, professional development and our experience. The second was a framework. RISD gave us a great lesson plan framework around universal design for learning that we could implement into our learning management system, which really helped with our curriculum work. And then the last piece, and this is where we're at right now five years later, is finally having a learning management system that allows us to integrate the technology and the design so teachers can kind of have one-stop shopping to gather those lessons and to gather that instruction. So I want to show you what some of those pieces look like, and you can use these resources, again, back in your own building. So when we talked about professional development and common language, we actually used um, the E3T modules that are built on the, um, the website that I showed you. There are, I think, 15 modules that um, our ISD put together, and we um, gave them to our teachers in a blended environment. So sometimes they met in their PLC, sometimes they met with their coach, 
We um, sometimes did whole group instruction, but what we liked about the modules is they were centered around the guiding principles of universal design for learning. So they were built in Articulate, and you're gonna see as you go through those online modules, there's multiple ways to be engaged, there's multiple ways that the content is given to them, and then there's multiple ways of the, where they can show what they know. So all teachers in our district spent a lot of time the first year of our implementation of just learning about this. You know, we didn't focus in on, you know, trying to build out our learning management system or trying to do a lot of other things. We really focused in on our um, professional development. And two of probably the most important um, modules we went through as a district, besides the first one on just talking about UDL, were this idea of developing a web presence that's meaningful to kids, to parents, to community members, and then this whole idea of how do you start to frame out the learning. And those two modules took a lot of time, but they were so important to our, our foundation because what we found were about half of our teachers, they didn't even have any kind of digital presence or any kind of digital footprint. And some had an amazing digital presence and a digital footprint. And when you decide to go one-to-one, -one, and you've got a third grader and a fifth grader in, you know, at an elementary school, and then you got another kid at the middle school, my parents were calling me going, I can't help my kid anymore. I can't, where's the folder? You know, where's the book that I, I mean, I used to know to go home. I go to chapter two, I could help my kid out. Now you've totally, you've, you know, rocked their world. You know, we're telling them to go to Edmodo, to go to Google Doc, or go here, go, I mean, at Haiku, I probably, my second year, I was like ready to pull my hair out because every teacher was trying a different LMS or, um, you know, trying to create this web presence and differentiate using all of these different, um, you know, tools. So this really helped us focus our thinking and we were very prescriptive then about how we wanted to um, develop our web presence and how we wanted to frame the learning. Because if you are a special ed student and you have ADHD, having five different teachers tell you how to do things five different ways doesn't help their executive skills. So um, it was really a place for us to be in. And that's really what started our um, conversation about how do you, you know, balance out creativity and you know, that idea of you know, teacher autonomy with really being um, thoughtful about design. And this document, this one pager, was kind of like our, our you know, our, the, the, the Ten Commandments. We all followed our, our second year of going through this process. And we just simply talked about what were some things we wanted all teachers to provide um, students when they would go online and they would be accessing their curriculum and we wanted to make sure it met the needs of all of our children so they could maneuver use their new device in an effective way and one of the big pieces was making sure they knew some basic unit resources we wanted to include we spent a lot of time a lot of time talking about big ideas and essential questions and bringing in lesson openers and engagement and breaking up a lot of these parts of that UDL checklist into meaningful bites that our, our teachers could digest as they went through the process. And again, having a coach that has something like this that can work with teacher A, then go to teacher B was really, really critical. Um, what I'd like to do, as I've been talking a while, is I want to, at your table, hopefully you have some people to talk about, just to kind of chew on that idea of how is it important when you're designing your instruction, is it important to have that kind of a framework for students and for parents? Is that something that you've been thinking about as you've been going through this, you know, this process of implementing UDL? So I'll give you like two minutes, just chew on that and then we'll, we'll digest that together. <laughs> No?
did. We did. It's a great. We did with the tech committee, and but we had to have some parent nights too. Yeah. yeah. That's like I think I agree. Yeah. One night I, we were we were we do a hybrid summer school, and um, I actually had a dad recording me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. it's not real good. But what we, with our hybrid program that we ran over the summer, the, in order for them to get their iPad back, the parents had to come. So that, oh, yeah. yeah, food. We did a food program, and it was very helpful. We, after school, and it's still hard. So we've been trying to build it into like conferences because they usually come to that. So, okay, good questions. I don't know. Yeah, this question. All right, I'm going to ask that, invite you to close your conversation. And can I have some of your thoughts on what we were talking about with regards to, you know, having um, some systems in place as far as, you know, your web presence, you know, getting information to children in a, in a meaningful way so they aren't, you know, you want them to be independent, but they can't be independent if they, they don't know what that expectation is. What were some of the conversations that you guys were having? I know I heard good stuff. And that's huge because you really are educating two groups, especially when you're giving the kids a lot of choice in how they can show what they know. And you're going to see with um, some of the ways we're able now to collect the data and collect that assessments from the students, they have a lot of choice, you know. So a parent's like, is it, I just want to write the paper or can I just turn in the poster, <laughs> you know. And we're like, no, it's not like that. You know, they've got, let them pick. You want them to choose. You know, the other piece we've really tried to, um, to work on in, I, in the earlier TED talk about growth mindset, we're really trying to get our kids to start setting some goals and you know, giving parents that data and saying, okay, your student's at a, a level two you know, reader right now, and then they talk to their neighbor. Well, he's at a level five. Well, where are they supposed to be? And we're like, they're in first grade. Everybody's gonna be at a different spot, and that's okay, and we're all gonna set our own goals. But it's fascinating because parents talk and they wanna know at the end of first grade, Johnny should be reading here. And it, those are tough conversations to have with parents. And the more transparent you are, the more challenging those conversations have become. And we're really trying you know, to make them understand in first grade, you know, it's a continuum of learning. And that's where um, you know, it's, it's great for the kid, but it is a challenge for the parents. So that's a great point. Other thoughts? Is that, what did you say? It's not a grade, it's learning. It it's not a grade, it's learning. And yes, Right. We in our elementary we we've moved to more of that competency based model, but they are they like that grade. They want to know what I got an A, they can relate to that. That's a challenge. Good good points. Good. Any one more comment and then I'll kinda go on. And how do you have, but you know, you want to have flexibility and you want to have choice and you want to have all of those, you know, opportunities for students. And just by eliminating something as simple as, okay, we're all going to, we may not all love this system. There's no perfect LMS. We're all going to commit to it and we're going to use our best design with that one system. And I, I think that's really an important piece. And I, that's been a stumbling block I've seen along the way. We, we, we struggled through it for two years. Did you want to add something? I just say the uh, comments that you talked about from getting everybody on board, you know, at, at all levels, throughout to the parents, being intentional, intentional from a change management standpoint, it's very clear. The, the site visits that we did yesterday was a huge theme that culturally we have to take the time to make sure that everybody in the community understands what you're doing right. before you try to implement it and say you need to be held accountable to this. Right. Everybody needs to understand 
Right, right. The why is huge. We spent, we, I, when we first started, we did Simon Sinek's The Why video. We, we <laughs> shared that with all of our stakeholders, but it takes longer. And you know, sometimes I think, you know, superintendents, assistant superintendents, we want to move fast, and you, you just, you can't always move fast. I, it's, you've got to have, and we move pretty fast in our district. I say that all the time. I sometimes feel like we're on the bleeding edge, and, and I love that, but you know, it's hard. You want to move fast, but you know, you can't always do that because you've got to bring, you want to bring everybody along, and that's why vision, strategic planning, it's critical. I'm going to, I'll always end with our strategic plan because that really keeps us, you know, staying the course to our, our core. Right, right. That, that, you make a great point because it was a financial, you know, commitment. And when talking to Kathleen, I was so glad, you know, that was the district we went, that was the site visits we're at. And you're hearing some of those same themes, like you said, they have coaching. You know, they called it something a little bit different, but it is a, a big investment. And I, I think district leaders then need to make some decisions about what you're going to abandon. We had a, 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 a a, like a literacy class at the elementary and we decided we were going to uh, get, move out of that and we were going to create a 21st century literacy coach so we were able to free up some funds there and then move it into our coaching model and so we made we made some decisions you have to kind of start to shift some of the monies that you do have and um, make some decisions and that's where having you know a leader that isn't you know in control of the money or has you know handle on those the budget can really push those initiatives forward and again I think if you want to have a systemic approach everybody needs to understand the, the vision of the organization great great comment so you can kind of see we spent a lot of time talking about just the you know what's in your web and some of those basic conversations but this was so fundamental the, we've got these bookmarks our ISD gave us everybody has they're on I put them on the website Sue said she brought some to the conference today Sue Harden um, and her team uh, developed our UDL lesson plan creator and then our UDL lesson design checklist they were I mean everybody in the district was walking around with these bookmarks which is helpful and we really used this framework and took our teachers through a lot of professional development on all of the pieces we were looking for in um, a lesson and again you aren't always going to do everything like perfectly I, I know I you know I'm not doing UDL the right way and it's not you have to get people over that kind of fear and conversation. So we spent a lot of time talking about developing these lessons using our framework that we have up here. And then the checklist was so important because when you wanna go into a classroom, you kind of wanna, you know, there's certain little pieces you're looking for. So even if a principal or a coach goes into the classroom just for five minutes, they may just notice, you know, an option like number five down there, include options to help students learn from text-based materials. Maybe they're using a text reader. Or maybe you're gonna go in at the beginning of the lesson and you can clearly see they're really hitting the big ideas and those essential questions. Secondary people are like the, I was terrible with bulletin boards. Like I put it up in the fall and it never changed again until like the, the, I was packing up my room. So we spent a lot of time saying to our secondary teachers, okay, you got your big idea, you got your essential questions, you wanna make it visible in the classroom, you need to change it, you know, more than once a year. And these, the, those are hard conversations. I mean, you're talking about a lot of people who are very invested in the way they've taught. You know, I taught social studies this way. I lecture, the kids love when I lecture. Like, well, of course they do, you're putting them to sleep so they're gonna be quiet and good so you know you're really moving people's cheese when you say you can't lecture for 50 minutes at a high school anymore and um, but you know we it, but we have great teachers I mean amazing teaching staff in our district who is really um, stepped up to a lot of these new asks that we're asked we're having them do not only are they being asked to redesign their instruction but now every kid had a device in front of them so a lot of um, cheese being moved at one time so this was critical and what we found is we were asking our teachers to do all of this lesson design and redesign, and we had nowhere really to put it. You know, I mean, you, there's Atlas Rubicon, there are all these like curriculum planners out there, but then the teacher had to go to this site to get their great UDL lesson, then they had to go to the learning management system to put the stuff in for the kid, then you gotta go to power school to input the grade. There's a lot of work that has to be done, and I, I'm not standing here saying I have the answer or the perfect LMS because 
I'd probably be then in Hawaii because I've made so much money on solving that problem. So what I'm going to share right now is just a solution that, you know, of what we're doing right now at this moment in time in our district. And what we were able to do is we, we use our LMS to build all of our um, lessons and our units of study. And we're able to build in the elements of universal design for learning within our learning management system. So what you see here um, is a screenshot of um, our, the lesson plan template that we use in um, our learning management system. And at the elementary, we use a, a software company called It's Learning. A lot of these LMSs have a built-in planner feature. I just don't think people use them. You know, Blackboard has one. You, you wouldn't know until you start digging into some of these LMSs. And what's nice about it is you can customize these templates so you can put in what the components are you're looking for. So this is a fourth grade unit, and um, I think the book that we're going to be looking at is, if I apologize, it's uh, Poppy. I don't know if any of you know the book Poppy. We read Poppy in fourth grade. And we're able to build in our big ideas, our essential questions, and we're really able to also build in that lesson planning template the um, practices of lesson design from UDL. So we're able to make sure we're really being thoughtful about multiple means of engagement, multiple means of representation, and multiple means of um, giving kids you know, opportunities to action and expression we call show what you know. So this is an example of the LMS where you're able to turn things on for teachers, off for students, so you're not working in two systems at the same time. So right here, um, we're talking about lesson openers and it's student engagement. So we build in the playlist. So in a minute, I'll show you that. We use Safari Montage. And we're talking about change in this particular unit. So when you go to the Poppy playlist, we've got maybe some videos, an article, different opportunities for students to pick what they want to look at as their lesson opener. But we've built that playlist um, in a collaborative environment. We have six elementary. So all of the teachers have access to the great ideas of the other five buildings. And that has been huge. That's probably been the most powerful thing that has happened with this um, process that we've used because before my teachers at Disney weren't telling my teachers, you know, at Eisenhower unless they emailed each other, you know, what they were using. So we're able to build in all of the different resources that all six elementaries have regarding lesson openers or um, different assessments they've used. And our LMS allows us to turn those features on and off for kids. So I can make a group, I can give these five kids this opportunity, or you give them the choice. So this has been really helpful with increasing student engagement because you've centralized um, the content in those, um, I call them, and I, you probably have heard, like the learning object repository into one spot. You don't have to use it all, but it's there for you. And you're not re-uploading it into a, another place for, um, you know, you don't have to pull it down, upload it somewhere else. And then the other piece that's been really helpful is this idea of making content available to all different levels of students. So maybe I'm reading at a third grade reading level and my neighbor is a fourth grade reader. You want to make sure you have that content accessible in all of those different reading levels. We also build that into the LMS as well. So we may have a reader's theater for some of our students at a certain level. We may take the big idea and we may find that content um, at a different level text, but it's the same big idea. And we build all of that um, into the learning management system. And the other nice piece is you can upload, you can see right here, um, we put different sources in. So they're doing a performance task. There may be an article, there may be a video all different kinds of resources. And I gave you guys access to a fourth grade site today so you can actually go in and kind of check it out. So this really provides some opportunities for teacher collaboration that we never had before because we're able to create what we call notes pages and they say teacher notes so teachers can collaborate and they can share and they don't all have to be, you know, your neighbor next door. So it's really opened um, the door to a lot of collaboration, but it also makes things really transparent, which is scary on the other side. You know, I can go into any class at any time and see what's happening throughout the district. So you got to have a lot of trust to do that. And I'm not saying we have like perfect trust. Uh, <laughs> that was a huge shift because when you think about how LMSs have worked in the past, 
you know, you kind of made your Edmodo site and everybody kind of held on to it. Maybe you copied it and gave it to your neighbor. But now it's very transparent. But the power of it is you have the power of numbers. If people, I think, really believe in what they're doing, they want to share. And I do believe our teachers want to share. And they want systems that um, allow them to share in a way that doesn't make their job 10 times harder. You know, that I, I really think that we want to make the life of the teacher a little bit easier. <laughs> We've put a lot on them, and the more systems we can put into place like this to help with that is huge. Um, one other uh, staff member I added, and she's been invalu invaluable, is um, this year we added an instructional consultant that builds all the content. So the teachers send her the content, just an email, whatever, you know, whatever it is, and she builds it. So what you're going to see is all of our um, content in the LMS is done in a very systematic way. So third through fifth grade, the font's the same. You know, just these little pieces that I know sound really silly, or where you're going to find the text of the book, or where you're going to find um, the homework assignment, or where you're going to find the daily agenda. We've been really thoughtful about that, and by having one person do that inputting. It's a it's a big deal. I didn't real because I like technology. You know, I like. I mean, that was something important to me. Yes. So they're not creating the lessons; they're just formatting them. The person that puts it in the system for us, they're not. No, they they, they have like we'll have like a, six people at a table working on this unit, and one person we Apple TV at one person puts the the content physically into the system. Yeah, and I, again, that's something I didn't think of as a person that does, I like sitting and working and uploading, and the other teachers like it takes them 20 minutes and no fault of their own, they just, that's not something they're really good at. And that sets, that makes people so uncomfortable, you know, when you don't do it right the first time, it turns you off. It takes you 20 minutes to upload a PDF and then it doesn't download right for the kids. You, so that was a really uh, important piece that we learned about um, in our process. So the teacher notes are great. We also have built, um, at every grade level, there's a, a common folder where they can build the content in the learning management system. Oops, so what I want to do, and the perfect timing for my PowerPoint here to go out, <laughs> um, I do want to show you, um, before we start wrapping up here, an example of what this looks like. So I gave everybody an a access to our um, It's Learning site. And again, I, I'm not, I, I, I always say this because uh, we, we have people come in. It's not about the learning management system. It's about the design, the way you leverage it. I don't care what LMS you pick, you know. I mean, Blackboard, Edmodo, they're all, they all have something different to offer. There's not a perfect one. It's the systematic approach that you take to using it. And, and that's what I really want to stress. So you're going to log in today on the left where it says log in with its learning. I'm going to log in with my regular account here. And I apologize, they had me reboot, so I have to log in again. Um, there, at the very bottom of the page, I gave you a screenshot of where to go in all of those directions. Yep. So when you come in, you're going to see a fourth grade course. I think I put two courses in there for you today. But um, but this is an actual course that has, you know, our students in it. And the piece I wanted to share with you is. The planner. So I'm actually logged in as a teacher. So this planner is something that only the teacher sees. So even when the student logs into the learning management system, the teacher will just see the planner information. And this has been very helpful because they're working in one spot and any of the digital assets we upload. So I'm going to go down a little bit here the plans so you can kind of see what I'm talking about okay, here we go. you can put in the planner but then they go into the live site for the kids so anything that we put in here as far as um, you know during reading activities all of those resources that teachers built, you can push right out into your class. You're in one location to do all of that. So that's really important to our, um, our teachers. And again, you can see there's a little on off button so they can turn things on and off for kids. And then you can also um, 
move kids along faster. We are really moving towards a competency-based model, so kids move at their own pace. And the nice thing about this is when you're in third grade, you want to give them choice, but you don't want to give them so much stuff they're, you know, they're completely overwhelmed you know, with all of these choices. So one of the things we're able to do is create smaller groups. So you could do literature circles, you know, however you wanted to work it out. And you can have kids moving through the content faster, slower, create some groups, and then give them that particular content as they're, as they're moving through. So we've really thought a lot about the learning management system as a way to give kids choice and to leverage the, um, the engagement piece and then also to get them to be able to move on when ready because your content is all that you've designed it so you can give Sally a little bit something different and Johnny may still be on you know chapter one working through that at his own pace and that's fine but you're, you've done it in a way where Johnny doesn't feel bad Johnny is doing his thing and he knows what he's doing and you're all connected back to that big idea of that unit so this has been very helpful to us um, the other piece, when you go into um, a class site, now I'm actually in the site, we've built in you know, extension activities. So students that are moving faster, you know, a lot of times you don't have things ready for them. We've naturally built in activities so kids can take that learning farther. They can explore the content in a deeper way. So we really tried to think about all of those principles of UDL and build them into our digital units of instruction. So it's been a journey. Um, this is our first year using the system like this. Uh, you, we've learned a lot along the way. It's not perfect. I, I wish some of my teachers were here. The math assessments were a challenge. The math work we've been doing um, has been a lot. To, the ELA seems to be going a little bit smoother. The math has been a challenge because my math teachers all want to teach everything at the same time. They're, you know, they're all about the direct instruction. So you know, changing that thinking has been a challenge. English language arts is, I think, a little bit of an easier you know, content area sometimes to, to move them through. So again, you have access to a temp account so you can kind of look around and see what the, um, the system has to offer. So I wanna make sure I go to my... So the last slide I have is, hopefully it comes up, our strategic plan. And I, I can't stress to you enough to go back and take a look at this because having a vision and having a strategic plan as a district is huge. In my five years um, in Fraser, our superintendent, he's amazing. He believes in a systemic approach to everything we do. Everybody has to, we're all on the same page. And I give him so much credit because that, that's hard. That is hard to always you know, stay focused. And we believe in our strategic plan. There are three years. This is our second one. And you're going to see that it's really about you know, transforming that learning environment. So we made a little one-page picture that talks about you know, some of the important things that we see happening um, as we move uh, through this transformation. And it's really about meeting the needs of the learner. And obviously, um, making sure that we're increasing the rigor but we're meeting the needs of um, you know, every single student. And it's an exciting time. I mean, it's a lot of work. We're having a good time some of the time, and other times it's kind of hard. But um, we have great teachers, we have great students, and I hope I was able to give you just a little bit of a glimpse of to some of the things that we're doing and how important um, the work with Universal Design for Learning um, has been for us on our journey. So thank you. I don't like keeping people longer than I have to. You've been wonderful. If you have questions, feel free to talk to me after. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.